Hi everyone and welcome to the Inverted Fullback. This is the Football Tactical Analysis channel. I'm Glenn Preston. I want to know how you can get your side to have much, much greater possession, really control games. Then stay tuned because I'm going to show you how we achieved it at Geisley. In my opinion, the first part of any analysis starts with data collection and then the analysis. And that can be encompassed collecting the matches or collecting data. The point is always subjective analysis. So I always like to trust the human eye first. Look at what you see with your own eyes when you're watching the matches. And then for me, if you're using data, does the data support your own theories? So in part one, I looked at the subjective analysis. I looked at the guys' build up play, identified sort of six, seven areas of potential problems and offered several solutions. So just a bit of a recap from session one. There's no depth. It's easy to press because the close proximity of our own players are not stretching. Equally, players playing cover shadow too much, being screened, not accessible, getting trapped in wider areas. Or even when we had numerical supremacy and structural supremacy, we still didn't outplay because we made poor decisions. Where we could have gone short, we went long, for example. You can see examples here where I'm identifying the number four and I'm presenting that we're not looking to get him on the ball as often as what we could do. Some of the observations we've made was that the opposition were really trying to lock down our central midfielders as probably our key players. And so we sort of offered some solutions in terms of how could we free them up? How could we create numerical supremacy and get our best players on the ball to help us build up a little bit more successfully? And finally, I offered some solutions and observations on terms of the positioning of the number four. Was he positioning himself in a pit where he could get on the ball and influence matters or move the opposition? So I'm showing here if he was positioned differently, he could move the opposition and thus we'd be able to either play to him or play through the other side. Analysis, and we're in a fairly unique position at Geyser that we also had a lot of data collection, so we had our own key performance indicator. But we can now look at the data to see whether this supports our theories. So these are the the indicators we used, I'll give you an example, KPI 1, passes per defensive action, this is what this graph is looking at, basically all that means is how many how many passes do we make before the opposition has a defensive action, an interception, a challenge, a tackle, a header, etc, how many passes from beyond the 20 yard line do we make before they, one of those actions takes place, and you can see here this line is going down from the top here. A little bit of a spike, but generally at this point at the bottom, you can see we're starting to go backwards, not retaining the ball as well. Your analysis done and you present to the management team and ultimately at this point, it's left in their hands. They may support your theories. They may completely throw them out of hand. It's really on them. But in this instance, Marcus and the management team were very, very supportive. They took on board a lot of the feedback. They worked on it in training. What we're really going to hopefully see now is how that transfers into the game and, and hopefully our analysts can make a positive impact on performance. From the off, we're looking at the depth situation. You can see the players are clearly reacted to this feedback. It's transferred well because they're really getting set into position much quicker, much sooner. And you can see the two pressing strikers. It's much tougher for them. We've got a better placed holding midfielder now who can outplay the 9 and 10 potentially or lock them down, occupy them. Here you can see our other centre midfielder has dropped into a false fullback position to create a three versus two. Just my preference, but I would have probably preferred to have my holding midfielder just down the sides of the striker so that one, he's in a better position to play centrally and penetrate, or two, he could draw the striker into a bad press and split the nine and ten, or even three, it might draw a midfielder or a winger out from line two to create a bad press. And I want you to pay attention to the engagement line because spending more on wanting to press high initially, but you're going to see as the examples progress, they're not going to be able to. There's still teething issues, like the holding midfielder could be receiving down the sides of the back, roll off the back of number 10 here, or even in doing so, move the number 9. How much time and space our best playmaker now, we're getting him on the ball, or one of the best playmakers on the ball. And also interesting now to look at how the opposition react to this overloaded situation at the sides. You can see there the wingers drop back. You see, they can't apply pressure on now. I'd like my centre-back here to be driving and drive a, draw a player out of the second line. But nonetheless, he's got time and space to be looking for those balls. And therefore, the quality into the final third's a little bit better. Again, you can see the depth. And they're getting set. So the opposition can't really get the good pressure on. So they're going to sit into a central block. The holding midfielder's trying to play between the 9 and 10. And look at the shape again here. You've got a central midfielder having to engage our playmaker take him away from the centre of the pitch. And you've got the winger, if you look now, getting pushed back. He's getting pushed back into a back five. This is their midfield line. Now, there's no way in the world, I, I believe, Spennymore would want their midfield line to look like this, leaving themselves so open through the middle for passes like there. But what we're looking for is opportunities here to get in, you know, penetrate. 
and there's a missed opportunity here where it's a really good movement from Walters could have got in could have got in behind or a nine could have got in behind but we're retaining possession we're keeping the ball so much better and they can't apply pressure on the ball bit of opinion here with my own coach's hat on I don't really want us to switch the ball here I want us to kind of retain possession on the ball side where we've got strength in numbers we've got the ability to counter press we're controlling they're not getting near us in possession we've just got to wait for the right moments and opportunities to switch if we switch it has to be favorable to us whereby you're in a good position to exploit the opposition to penetrate moving forwards to have good numbers and potentially good structure for that switch of play to hopefully exploit them so you can see when we switch the play here with the quality of the pass they're right on top of us before he's got it. We don't have the structure for inside support or down the line particularly well. Pressing much harder because you can see here, you can argue to me this is 3v3, but we're not in close proximity to the ball. I'd still argue they've got a slight advantage there. So it's difficult for us to win that ball back instantly as soon as we've lost it. But here for me is a little bit of success because you've got Kingley James in the false fullback position, which is a recommendation for me. And when play manifests, he can pick and choose his moments to come back in as a free player back into the middle. Uh, really good reading of the game from Kingsley and good play. And, and it contributes towards eventually scoring a goal. One one, which in my eyes was a positive result and a positive performance. Naturally, in the eyes of the management team, who are just natural born winners, it was an abomination because they absolutely slaughtered the opposition and should have won the game. But nonetheless, I'm just going to look at it from a data perspective, just really looking at the in possession ones. Left represents um, how guys this performance was versus their average for the season. So everything in white is how they performed against Spennymore, and everything in blue is how they the season average. So passes was way up, possession was way up, final third entries and central penetrations wasn't. Which for that amount of possession might indicate you know what we had a lot of the ball, but we weren't penetrating as much. And I think I identified that in the analysis. But in terms of looking at Spennymore, you can see all of theirs was below average for a top side. We got them to perform worse than what the average team had performed against Geisley so far that season. Um, so there's lots of positives in there. If we look, possession 66% ranked number one, 325 passes ranked number one, PPDA ranked number one, lost in own half, third best in there. But it's just working on that final third and central penetrations, which wasn't as strong as what it could be. I'd like to think we did have a little bit of an influence there on improving certain aspects of play. That's just the process that I undertake within tactical analysis, but it's just an example for you. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments section below. I'd really be interested to find out if, you know, what methods other people use uh, but then my experiences of working with conference size guys live which was a great experience